Hi everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you how to build decision trees in Rattle. For this setup exercise, we will be using the audit data set, which we have previously used. And in order to load that data, we simply click on the file name and we will be able to load the audit CSV. Once you load the data, uh, you have to make sure that the ID variable is set as the identifier. And then the target adjusted is also set as the target variable. You also have to make sure that the partition box is ticked. This is very important for training the model because essentially what we want to do is we want to use only 70% of the data set for training and then the remainder for testing and also validation. But if you want to know more about the data itself, for example, if you want to know more about the target variable and you want to know how many, for example, unique values there are, um, you simply just untick the partition and set the target adjusted as, as the input, and you will be able to provide summaries or descri a description of the data set. So for instance, I want to know more about my target variable. Um, in this case, I want to know how many unique values there are, there, which in this case, there's 2,000, and then there's two distinct um, values. Now, if I want to know more about that, then I can go back to the data tab and click view and a data viewer opens, which I can see exactly the, the, the distinctive or the distinct values for my target variable, which in this case is a zero and one, um, a typical classification problem or classification label. So you've got no's versus yeses. Now, if you want to build a decision tree, obviously you have to set this as a target and click partition and execute. Um, you have to select the, the, the tab model and you will be able to see various um, models here. For this week, obviously we are going to be using the decision trees. So make sure that the decision tree radio button is ticked. Um, and you will also see there's a, there's a bunch of variables or a bunch of parameters that you can use to fine tune your data set, uh, to fine tune your model or, or to cross validate your model. But we'll talk about them in, uh, in much more detail during the lab, but essentially they are there to, to help you build, for example, um, different models or different, uh, or train different uh, decision trees based on the requirements that you have or based on the context of the problem that you are trying to solve. So um, if you wanna build a very basic decision tree, essentially you keep these parameters as is and you click execute and a summary of the decision tree is generated. This is the summary output, but if you wanna know what it actually looks like, you can click draw and another window pops up and that would be your decision tree. Again, we are gonna talk about this and we are gonna talk about what each node actually means and what what those information or what those data actually talk about or what they refer to. But at this stage, what I want you to, what I want you to do is just to compare and contrast what do you see here and what you get in the summary output. Well, and you will notice that apart from the actual node or the information that you see from the decision tree here or the, from, the, from the picture, you will also be able to see the error rate um, in, in the summary output. So once you create the once you create a decision tree, obviously you can look at the rules as well. And if you scroll down, um, you will see all the rules, which pretty much summarize uh, they summarize what you see in the picture. Now, if you want to know whether your model is actually performing any good, you have to evaluate the model, and to do that, you have to click or um, choose the evaluate tab. For this one, you're gonna see again, there's a bunch of different, there's there's various um, sort of measures that you can use. For instance, the confusion matrix or the ROC, the lift, the precision, um, the sensitivity prediction or predicted values versus observations or observed um, data. And you can also see the model that, that, that have been used, which in this case is the decision tree. Now for this one, you need to make sure that the, for this exercise, you need to make sure that the testing button is selected along with the error matrix and also the decision tree. And if you just execute, you will see your confusion matrix is, um, is generated. Um, we will talk about this, but we'll talk about what, what these actually two, um, um, what they actually mean and what is the overall error rate and, and, and much more about the confusion matrix. But then again, 
Um, once you create your model, you will be able to, for instance, you, you want to know how many uh, predicted um, observation, how many predicted versus observed, um, for example, um, um, data you had in your in your model in your decision in your decision tree model again you can create that and, and you will see the r squared um, measure or the metric uh, which is also very important so essentially what we are trying to do here and we will talk about this again in the lab um, is to see how good our model is performing once you create your model once you see the for example the error matrix once you evaluate your model you can go back to the model tab and you can sort of change some of these parameters. And I highly recommend you do this before coming to class. For instance, if you set the complexity or the CP factor as zero, you will be able to build the biggest decision tree that you could possibly um, build. And you will see the results here. And you can then again, go back to the evaluate tab and you can see how different models or how different sort of decision trees given those parameters actually performing. Again, I highly recommend you go through this. I highly um, suggest you create a few decision trees and have a have a play around with the with the evaluation tab and, and see how different models are performing. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to bring them um, to, to your next tutorial, to your next lab. Thank you.